in this video, we're going to create a flexible filter functionality. By that, I mean that we can filter by any column in our data, but also we can filter by multiple values. So if you're ready, let's get started. On the left, we have the table that we want to filter. We have columns of date, item, region, size, and value. And let's suggest that initially, we want to filter for the items that contain alpha or are in the month of August. So I'll enter alpha and org, and they are separated by a space. Let's also suggest that we have a toggle that determines whether all of the search terms have to be in a row or if any of the search terms can be in a specific row. I'll select on cell M3 and I'm going to insert a checkbox. And when I check that and uncheck that, the underlying value changes between true and false. The next step is to break out the search terms. I'll select cell N7 and we're going to use the text split function equals text split, open in bracket. The text we want to use is in cell I3 and we want to separate this with a column delimiter of a space. When we close that and calculate, we now get those two search terms in a single row. If we had more or less search terms, we would have more or less items in that array. We're now ready to start building the include argument that we will use in the filter function. The first thing we need to do is to tackle the issue around how we search for a date. If I select cell H6, type equals, and then select all the values from my table, you will notice that it doesn't display a date. It displays a date serial number. Therefore, if we want to search on a date, we need to change this into a text value. To do that, I'm going to use the text function. So text, opening bracket, now, for the format text argument, we are going to create an array, and we need an array which contains the same number of items as we have columns in our data set. So for our first column of date, the formatting string that we want to apply is day, day, hyphen, month, 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 hyphen, year, 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 year. So that will give us the same format as we see in our date column. The next value in our array is how we want to format the item column. For that, we just want to use text, so we will use the at symbol. Let's do the same for the region column and also for the size column. Finally, we come to the value column, and for this, we want to have a number followed by two decimal places, so that'd be 0, 0, 0.00. And then close that array, close that function, and calculate. What that gives us is each column now contains text. Even the value column is a text value, but those values are currently right aligned. Next, we want to create a single column where the values in each row are the text values from all the columns combined. Now we can't just use the text join function. Text join, opening bracket, we have the delimiter, it would be a pipe. We can ignore empty, true, if we close that bracket at the end, what we actually get is just one row, a single row. That isn't what we want. So let's go back and we're going to edit our formula again. And this time we're going to use the by row function, by row. That means we're going to calculate on a row by row basis. The array will be the result of our previous text function. I'll press Alt and Enter to add a new line there. And then for our second argument, we have the function. The by row function passes across the values for each row. And then we need to create a function that declares what we will do with those values. To declare that function, we need to use the lambda function. We then state what we're going to call the values which are passed across from the by row function. We're going to call this row. So that means these are the values from each row. Next, we come to the calculation that we want to perform and we want to perform the text join. We're going to use the pipe symbol again. We're going to ignore empty, and then we get to pass across the values from each row. We can then close the text join, close the lambda, close the by row, and calculate. And you can see we now get a single column where each row contains all the values 
from that row. Next, we want to find out whether any of those text strings contain any of our search terms. Let's edit our formula. At the start, we will add search, opening bracket. The text we want to find is contained in N7, and we want the spill range from that, so we'll enter hash. That is the text we want to find, and the text we want to search in is the result of our by row function. So we can close that bracket at the end and calculate. This now gives us an error if those search terms are not contained in each of those text strings, or if it is contained in those strings, it returns a number of the position where we can find those values. Now we don't care about those positions. All we care about is whether those values do or don't exist. So in our function, we're going to add is number. We'll add that at the start, we'll close the bracket at the end, and that now gives us a true or a false. Because we have two search terms, we have two columns. But if we want to use this in the filter function, we need a single column of true or false. So let's edit our formula once more. And we're going to use the by row function again. So by row, opening bracket. And this time it's going to be working over those two columns of true or false. That is our array. For the function argument, we will use a lambda once more. And our parameter will once again be called row. Now, what calculation do we want to perform? Well, we have this checkbox here called match all. Therefore, if we check that box, we want to make sure that both of those terms exist in each row. Or if that is unchecked, we can have either term existing in that row. Therefore, we're going to use if, and we want to check M3. So if M3 is true, we want to use the AND function on each row. If M3 is false, we want to use the OR function on each row. We can now close all of those brackets and calculate. That now gives us a single value of true or false. You can see this first true, it contains August, so it displays true. The second true contains alpha, so therefore it returns true. If we now check that box, we can see that this item returns true because it's August and alpha in the same row. We're now ready to use this inside our filter function. Filter, opening bracket, and we want to filter the table. Then for our include argument, it's going to be the result of our previous by row calculation. Now, if there are no values, we are going to return the word none in square brackets. We can then close that and calculate. Here we have our issue again, that our date is a date serial number. So I will select the cells that it could populate, go to home and have my date formatting add in here. And obviously you can go through the standard formatting options to apply that. Now we have all the items that contain alpha or org. If I check the box, we now have the items that contain alpha and org. Let's change our search string. So it just contains June. That's all the items that contain June. It's June and South. And there we go, that's all the items that contain June and South. If we uncheck that, it'll be June or South. Now there's one other change that we want to make. What happens if our search selection is empty? In that scenario, it doesn't return any values, but it might be nice if it returned all the values. So let's edit our formula once more. For the include argument, we're going to use is blank. Is blank, and we want to check whether i3 is blank. If it is blank, it's going to return true or false. Now our by row is also going to return true or false. So if we use addition, that creates or type logic. And there we go. If our selection is blank, it returns all the items. However, if we search for al, it now returns all the items that contain al. It could be alpha or it could be small. Both of those contain the letters al. And that is how we can apply a flexible filter that works on any column, but also has multiple search terms. Now this was quite a complex formula. 
Wouldn't it be nice if there were a single function that we could apply that did all of this? Well, we've got one. So let's go and take a look. If you're a member of our Excel Academy, you will have the Excel off the grid ribbon. In there, we have custom functions for Lambda and Power Query. We want to search our Lambda library. You can see all of our Lambdas in there. Let's search for filter. We have flexible filter. I'm going to insert that into my workbook. Then if I use equals FX, you can see flexible filter. If we commit that, you can see the documentation of how we use this function. So let's now apply this function. For the return array, we're going to use our table. For our search array, so what array do we want to search on? This could be different to our filter array. We're going to use that same table. The next argument is search strings. That's going to be cell I3. The delimiter will be a space character. The match all strings option is in cell M3. If empty, we want to return none. Then we come to our formatting codes. So this will be an array. We're going to use that same date format, of day, month, and year. For the next column, you want to apply text, then text again, text again. And then finally, we have our numeric column, which is a number with two decimal places. You can close the array, close the bracket and calculate. And that now gives us exactly the same effect, but in a single function. If we check the match all option, you can see our filter changes. And that is the FX flexible filter function. It does all of that calculation inside a single function. If you want to get your hands on that function, it's available inside the quick calc library inside the Excel Academy. We also saw there the function vault add-in, and that's also available inside the Academy. So if you want to get your hands on those, just head over to excelfthegrid.com and check it out. And once you've done that, if you want more Excel goodness, then why not check out this video next? I think it's another one you'll really enjoy. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.